folks. Um, I'm Ann Francis. I am a Andis educator. Um, I've been grooming for um, 23 years. I'm just going to adjust this a tiny little bit. There we go. I bumped my camera. So um, I've been grooming for 23 years, um, both um, grooming rescue dogs, um, grooming show dogs, all sorts of dogs. Um, I'm from just south of Boston, Massachusetts. So if I talk a little fast, feel free to ask me again to show something or explain something. I do, uh, when I teach, I tend to have ideas coming at me from all different angles. So, um, sometimes I tend to talk really fast and, um, maybe out of order. So this is my dog, Shay. Um, I picked Shay because she is a rescue dog and she's very typical of what a um, pet would be, any pet that comes into our salons, um, many of your pets at home. Um, Shay is a Pomeranian Poodle Cross. Um, I've owned her for probably about five years. Um, we do a thing at grooming competitions called the Rescue Rodeo. And um, what happens is local rescues bring in dogs for us to give beauty makeovers and they look better for adoptees and we make it into somewhat of a contest. So Shay was my contest dog um, down in Pennsylvania. She was rescued from a um, breeding facility. Um, she has a lot of little quirks about her. Um, like I said, she's probably about 10 to 12 years old because we weren't sure of her age. Um, but she's only got a few teeth left. We've got her back on a healthy maintenance schedule. And as you can see, I haven't trimmed any of her eyes or anything like that, which is very hard for a professional groomer to leave that alone. Um, so... <clears throat> I wanted to uh, show you guys how to maintain um, cleanliness around the eyes. Um, as we learned with our pandemic and, um, you know, some grooming shops closed up here in Massachusetts, we were closed for about three months. So a lot of professional groomers were, you know, rushing to do some at home care for you guys. Um, so this is a great thing to learn and even between groomings um, and especially with the pandemic, I know some people are either, um, you know, out of jobs or have been, um, you know, just got back from working. So they're trying to stretch their professional grooming at, um, you know, at home, which is great. Um, so I wanted to show you some tools to use with this. Um, we have some brushes, which are called slicker brushes. They're short pin brushes in here. And I would use this for a bigger dog. And since Shay is just a little tiny dog, I'm gonna go ahead and use my little brush. And then I have um, what's called a flea comb. And as you notice, um, these tines on the clo uh, very close together on the comb. And um, you know, it's great to use for eye corners to get all that um, gunk out. However, if you are going to use this, we need to make sure that we soften that eye goop. Um, now, I tend to, um, you know, just kind of get my dog's eye googas out almost daily, but you know, that's what I do. I probably pick strangers eye boogers out of dogs. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you can keep um, from getting buildup under the eyes, that's gonna be the best thing. So if your dog goes to the groomers and you can actually keep up on that buildup, that is what's gonna be key. Um, because if you go to pull that hair um, out, that goopy stuff out of the hair, and there's a lot of hair there, it is like pulling gum out of your own hair. And it's gonna hurt and your dog is gonna bite you. So please do not do that. So um, what I recommend is a cotton, just a cotton ball. If you don't have um, any products, which 
there are tons of products out there as far as um, eye corners, um, eye staining, things like that. Um, definitely make sure that it is a pet product and read all the directions first. But say you don't have that, I've got a little, little bowl of water that I set off to the side just because I didn't want to spill it on ourselves. And what I do is I just take my cotton and rest it on those corners of the eyes. And I'm just kind of dabbing at it. And what you want to do is you just want to get that, that crusty stuff nice and soft. And you can break it up with your fingers as well. Um, and just get it nice and soft. And it should start to break up and slide out for you. I'm just going to get a little bit more water. Just put it over here. No, that's not for drinking. That's for your eyes, honey. Nice. And just get right in there. Get it nice and soft. And the thing is, if you don't keep up on this crusty eye stuff, what will happen is um, you'll get um, sores under these crusties. A lot of times as a groomer, you know, if something's not done for five or six weeks and then they come in for a bath, we tend to see a lot of buildup and that leads to um, soreness under the eyes because bacteria can really grow in there. And that's also what makes your dogs stinky is that I um, grunge. So now that I've got everything nice and wet, and as you can see, when I work on Shay's face, I tend to hold down here on her chin. Many dogs with hair on their face also have a little beard, and I just kind of hold her little chin to keep that um, keeping her from jerking around. Now, um, like I said, she is a rescue dog. However, I've worked with her a lot to be able to tolerate grooming. When I groomed her in the actual contest, it was, um, she was very scared, uh, very frightened, you know, and when you work with dogs, you need to train them. Grooming is a learned behavior. Everything is new to them. Everything is, um, just something that they have to learn and learn that it's okay it's um it's a pleasant thing most of my dogs that come in to see me in the salon really really enjoy you know um seeing me so they should be used to having their little chins held by their groomer when they go anyways um if you want to desensitize a dog for that you can have a really good treat that they love like something really valuable um freeze-dried liver, uh, you know, tiny pieces of cheese, just tiny, tiny things. So in between, you can give the dog a treat. I'm going to turn her around again. And we've softened up all that, that nasty, yucky stuff. And now I'm taking my flea comb, and I'm going to run it through on the eye, eye corners. And I told you she'd be a good model because she's not, you know, miss perfect like some of my show dogs and I, as you can see i'm just kind of working it out nice and slowly and if you if you find something that's gonna like if you're doing it and it snags don't force it that means that it needs to be wet down a little bit more and you guys can see i did get quite a bit of gunk out of there so then i'm just gonna take my dry cotton ball and kind of dry this hair up. So we've managed to remove all the gunk. And like I said, there are products on the market that you can Google to help with staining or that build up. But plain warm water and a cotton ball will do the same in a pinch. It won't help with staining, but it will definitely break up that stuff for you. Um, as you guys may have noticed, Shay is on a pink mat here on my grooming table. Now, most grooming tables have some traction so the dogs feel comfortable and don't slide around. Um, this is actually a paw mat made for uh, groomers. They definitely sell to the pet parents as well. 
but um, something like a yoga mat or an anti-slip pad on the table or uh, a lot of people will do it on the washing machine, things like that. Just kind of gives your dog a little more um, sense of security. So then what we have are some grooming shears. And I will show you, they come in a few different sizes here. And professional groomers are used to using larger shears. We handle these all the time. And this is a lot for a pet parent to just pick up and use. So I would recommend going with some of the smaller tools. And I especially like these because they have a safety um, top there. They're not pointy. And also we have thinning shears. See how these have a teeth, teeth on one side and straight on the other? I think you guys can see that there. That's good. These are what's called thinning shears. And um, I find using thinning shears on the eye corners is um, a lot less scary and it doesn't take out all the hair at one time. So you're not gonna make a big bald spot. Um, you know, all, all of this too is about safety. So if your dog is very difficult for their eyes, please leave it to the professionals. And generally pet groomers will tell you if your dog is difficult on, on something. Um, so, you know, you wanna make sure that you're confident that you can safely work around your dog's face. And as well for puppies. Um, puppies, you know, can be uh, looking everywhere. They can, and it's funny, sometimes when I groom puppies, I sing to them to get their attention. So they stay focused on me. And, um, you know, Shay might be looking all around too, but I'm very confident in holding her and making sure I get her done. So, um, I wanted to show you how to hold your thinning shears. Now, no matter if you're a righty or a lefty, you want to put your ring finger in this bottom hole with this finger holder that pulls off, pulls out. And, and that's where your pinky is going to go. Sorry, Shay just wants to do lots of kisses. And then you're going to put your thumb in the thumb hold. And when you're holding your shears like this, it gives a lot of um, support and it, more control over your scissors. And when you're scissoring, you're supposed to just move your thumb so you actually have control over your shears. If I was to move both in and out with both of my hands, the scissors kind of go wonky. Like you can see that they go back and forth like that and you have less control over them. Whereas if I'm just moving my thumb, I have a lot more control. You can see that they're not gonna go left and right and all wonky. So we have that. We have Shay. I'm just gonna come around to the front here. Um, now you can use a clipper for this as well. I'm sorry, I just had to grab my little clipper. Um, we have a five-in-one blade clipper, and there's also um, a pet model that you can change the settings on your blades. You always wanna make sure, though, that you don't go too short with your um, clipper setting. Um, also, some dogs can be scared of clippers near their face, so, um, you know, be, be sure that you know that you can handle it with the clippers. Uh, instead, keep your shears handy. So I'm gonna do hers with shears and I'm gonna kind of come over here and be out of the picture for a little bit so you guys can actually see her head better. So I've got my comb and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the top hair over her eyes and kind of comb it back and you can also do it with a brush too. You know, depending on when the last time your dog's been groomed or had a bath, depends on if you can get a comb through that or not. So as you can see, I've got the corners of her eyes kind of up. And what you wanna do is you wanna lay it at an angle down here and you're just doing the corners of her eyes and then up here. So it's gonna be like an inverted V. 
Now, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to post as well. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in here at an angle and I'm gonna start snipping that hair out. And I just bring it back and I pull up this side and at an angle and take that. Now you can see that Shay lets me hold her little chin. Most dogs will let you. If you have a dog that really does not, sometimes you have to get a little creative and I will hold them by kind of like their, their jaw down here and I just kind of place my hand underneath and hold it like this. But I want her to come down a little bit so you guys can see. And I'm just making sure that I get all the hair that I want to trim. And go slow, you know, trim a little bit, take a look at it, trim a little bit more. Try to stay out of the way so you guys can see. And I'm gonna get that nice and cleaned out as much as I desire there. All nice and cleaned out. And hopefully, you know, there's not a ton of hair in there. Um, that was probably about six weeks on her that I hadn't trimmed. Generally, my own dogs, I'll give a bath every one to two weeks and then trim their eyes as well, um, just to keep it nice and clean. Now, one of the big things about that I've noticed with home grooming is people like to take their shears and they want the bangs shorter here. So they tend to go in straight on like this, straight up. Now, um, it, it always ends up not looking pretty. <laughs> it always ends up being too short um, or just not, not quite pretty. So what you wanna do is you wanna comb the bangs forward or brush your bangs forward, as you guys can all see. Look down, please. See, I've got that. And I'm gonna take my little shears here and I'm gonna trim what I call a visor. What I'm doing is I'm trimming straight across there. And I'm gonna come and I'm gonna comb this again because with dog's hair, you know, it's not, and nothing's perfect with dog's hair. So as you can see, I, I did cut and it did look very nice, but now I comb it again and I can see that there's more that need to come off. And these have a nice curve to them, which I really like. It makes it easier to um, get in where you need to get in with your scissors, but also it just gives a little bit more shape to it. And we've trimmed those back. Take out all that yucky hair there. And you've got a nice little trimmed eye, eye corners and eye brows there. So, and then I just fluff it up. And, you know, if you've made uh, a real big, you know, cut in here, which I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. Say I messed this up and I made like, a yucky cut right there. You guys see that? Wait. I know it's kind of hard to see, but that's that's a cut that I don't I don't really like the way it looks. It looks really choppy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my thinning shears and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use my thinning shears and I'm gonna just blend that cut mark away. Us groomers call these thinning shears, the groomer's eraser. So they're a lot more forgiving than re regular scissors. The downfall is it takes more patience on your part and your pup's part. So you can definitely use these to trim off any more than, you, than what you'd like to trim without, you know, committing to one final cut with your shears. It kind of gives you a little bit more leeway. I'm just keeping on trimming back her head so you guys can see a nice little little head there. Can you look at the camera, Shay Shay? She just wants to look at me. 
So you can see those are all trimmed up nice. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? <laughs> Hi, baby girl. So, you know, it takes patience, it takes training, but you can help the groomer and do things at home. And like I said, the biggest thing is keeping those eye corners um, gucky free. That's going to be your biggest trick. Um, my baby girl. And, you know, if, if you feel like that you just can't um, trim around the eyes, then that's fine. Leave it up to the professionals. But Andis does offer some nice pet tools that are sharp, but not um, too crazy big, not too crazy sharp. They're nice and lightweight, um, small enough to fit in your hands. Um, what else we got? <laughs> Hi, tiny. So that's about all I have on eye trimming. Um, what does it say? What's the number one mistake I see with people with this type of grooming? My number one mistake that I see that people do is when they cut their dog's top of their eyes, they come in with the shears straight like this. That is the number one mistake that I see, and it's always, always, always too short and really hard for a professional groomer to fix. So when you're trimming above the eyes, remember, you want to go side to side, not straight on. Let's see. Um, I can see Andis Grooming just posted where you can get these shears at animal, um, animalandis.com. And uh, these small ones are the six and a half inch shears. And then we do have some larger ones. So say if you've got like a doodle or a standard poodle, um, these would be more appropriate because the dog has a bigger head. Um, you'd be there all day trimming uh, doodle bangs with these tiny short ones. So, um, you know, if you do have a larger dog that you need to trim the head, go ahead and um, go ahead and get the eight inch ones for yourself. Um, thinning shears do come in different lengths, but I tend to like the smaller ones. It just, they're easier to control, um, easier to get into little tight places like the corners of the eyes. Um, just trying to see if there's any other questions coming through. I know, Shay Shay. <laughs> Shay is very happy because she can see again. Kept telling her, soon, soon, we're going to be trimming those soon. So do I have any other questions coming up from people? Hi, baby girl. I know, I know. <laughs> um, yes, you can do the same thing on a Shih Tzu. Anybody who has... Um, a dog that needs their eyes trimmed, uh, being a Shih Tzu or even a Cocker Spaniel, Doodles, anything like that. You just follow the same kind of steps, um, just a different breed. But you can do the same thing with thinning the eye corners and trimming a, a visor. Also, the same steps for any dog that has build up, um, I call them eye boogies. Um, you know, and my dogs are used to me uh, getting them out pretty much every morning, but you know, we all get busy with life. So the last thing you're thinking about sometimes is getting your dog's eye boogies out. But if you can prevent buildup, that's going to be the key. And sometimes you need to wait for them to go to the professional groomer and you can start from, um, you know, start from a clean, fresh, um, being like she would come home looking like this. And then from, that uh, moment on, then I would say to myself, okay, I really need to maintain this until her next um, professional grooming. <laughs> um, I'm just seeing if there's any other questions that are popping up. You're a good girl, huh? Um, sometimes when I do demos, I, I do it with dogs that have 
been um, show dogs or, you know, really on the table constantly. And a lot of people say, my dog never acts like that. So I picked my little um, rescue girl here. And, you know, she's gotten much better at grooming, but she is a little wiggle worm. Um, as you can see that I do have a grooming loop on her and I'm using my grooming table. If you don't have a grooming loop, um, it, you can have a partner in crime to kind of soothe your dog, hold your dog. Um, say we're, we were working on a, a table here. She's got her non-slip pad on. Um, I could be giving her a nice doggy massage while my partner trims her eyes. Um, one thing you want to make sure if somebody is working with you and they are petting, they're not like moving the dog or, you know, left or right, things like that. They want to give a nice, um, nice pet, but not moving the head on you. Have you ever have a dog bring, um, a dog in half groomed because they gave up? Absolutely. Um, I think that during the pandemic, Many people realize that grooming, dog grooming isn't as easy as it looks. Um, so yes, I have had people bring me half-groomed dogs. Um, also, you know, some people have to, you know, trim their dogs at home for whatever reasons. And that's fine with me. I'd rather see a half-trimmed dog than have, or a dog that has, you know, knots cut out of it than actually have a dog come in with pelted knots. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and Andis offers some great clippers for people as well on that. Um, I know. So, what else we got? Any other questions you guys have for me? Um, I'm trying to think of any other tips and tricks with this. Um, Always never leave a dog unattended on a table, uh, washing machine, anything like that, with or without a grooming loop. Never keep a dog up high unattended. Uh, that's probably one of the basic first thing about dog grooming. Um, never have anything left unattended on your table. What do you think, Shay Shay? You so happy you can see now? <laughs> yes, I know. Mama loves you. Any other questions people may have for us? How do you know if you hand strip an English cocker's head, would you use the thinning between the eyes? So on um, English cocker heads, um, they are, yes, stripped on the top skull. However, in between their eyes here in the corners, they are used a clipper. So if you don't have a clipper at home, you can use your thinning shears on the corners of the eyes only um, for English cockers. I hope that answers your question. How should their feet look? Should they be covered with fur? So um, many different breeds have many different looks as far as how their feet should look. I like to have the underside of the feet nice and clean um, because it gives a dog better traction on floors and it also helps keeping from anything getting stuck in there. And believe it or not, if the hair is not trimmed on the bottom of the feet, it will become matted. And I've actually had to clip out like rock sized knots in between a dog's foot. And I can imagine just how uncomfortable that is walking. So I definitely recommend that you keep the pads trimmed up. Um, whether or not you want to trim more on the foot itself is up to you. Many poodles have uh, what's called clean feet, so their feet are shaved. Um, I just kind of keep Miss Shay's feet nice and trim. Of course, she's not nice and trim right now because we were growing out for this video. But um, that's, that's about it. So... On a drop coat, how do you avoid scissor marks between the eyes? So with any dog, drop coat, poodle, anything, if you're using thinning shears, which are the ones with the, the comb looking side, 
these are what we call groomers erasers. So this is really gonna avoid having any of those chop marks. If you need to get in there quick with scissors to get the bulk out, I completely understand that. And you could use your safety scissors. However, you are gonna have that scissor cut line. And I can show you again on her on a different piece. I'm gonna show you, all right. So I'm just gonna make a yucky cut right there. That I just cut into that, that's not pretty, and it's a mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the thinning shears and I'm gonna thin that chop mark And what that does is it blends those harsh scissor lines. So now that's nice and smooth. Hope you guys can see. I'm working uh, in a mirror image and also <laughs> backwards. So you can see if you make any harsh marks with your scissors, thinning shears are a beautiful thing to help you erase that. Um, any other questions you guys might have? I really appreciate you guys, um, tuning in. I love when pet parents take initiative to help groom at home. Um, any help that we can get, we love. Um, so thanks for tuning in, um, any other questions you guys might have? I'll give an extra few minutes. <laughs> and you know, when you're working with your dog and you're putting it up to trim or something like that, um, I brought Shay in here probably about five minutes before, um, you know, I started grooming. And somebody's asking right now, how do you get your dog to sit still? Practice, 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 and more practice. Um, like my dog, Ozzy, is a mini poodle, and he is on the table quite often. So, um, you know, just getting them comfortable. Um, you can put your dog up here, like, with their non-slip mat, and give them treats, uh, something little, but something that's gonna say, if when I go up here, um, it's something good is gonna happen, not something bad. So you always want it to be positive re reinforcement. You wanna make sure that whatever you're working with your dog, it's a sturdy, um, sturdy surface. It's not rickety. You want the dog to feel safe, um, you know, it's just practice, 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 and positive reinforcement. Um, like I said, my puppies, I start them on the grooming table right away, um, you know, to get them used to things. Um, somebody asked, what do I use to get between the toes? So depending on what breed of dog you have, um, That's, that's kind of a more in-depth thing than I don't know what home grooming. But if you have a foot and you have your little, your little brush and you really want to brush this from keeping them from getting matted. Um, if I have little knots in there, I really try to brush them out. Or I can take my thinning shears if I have a knot and I can go in there and thin it out but you gotta be really careful about the webbing on this foot. Um, like for a poodle, what we would do is we would take our clippers and actually go in there with the edge of the blade and clip them out. Um, I hope that answers some questions. But as you can see, like right now, I'm, I'm holding her foot and I'm um, you know, massaging it so she is constantly knowing that that's what we wanna do, we wanna hold her foot. So, um, recommended home grooming table. 
So what I would do is just um, look at some of the distributors um, that that sell grooming tables. Um, Frank Rowan Son. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Pedigree Dog Grooming Supplies. Love Groomers. They all have. Um, grooming tables and it basically depends on what you want at home some people want a full grooming table that they can put their dog up and they can brush it and work on it some people just want a small portable table um, it doesn't have to be adjustable it could be um, you know a stand table with just regular legs just watch the um, the height of the table that you want it to be comfortable for you too you don't want to break your back so um, it's just basically p personal preference and uh, how much you want to um, use your table depending on how much you would invest in something because there is you know good better and best when it comes to um, tables so, do I have any other questions that people may have? No? Well, Miss Shay thinks that this is the best day ever. She gets some extra time with mom on the table. Getting a lovely massage. Well guys, I really hope that you learned something and I gave you some tricks and tips to work on your babies at home. Um, like I said, when in doubt, always um, ask your professional groomer for help. Um, but I hope that this gave you something to work on at home. And unless anybody else has any questions, then I think Shay Shay and I are gonna go enjoy the rest of the afternoon.